Well, one of our first round picks and our second round pick is out at least until October. Hello, everyone. My name is Derek, and welcome to Detroit Lions Syndicate. If this is your first time here, we talk all things about the Detroit Lions just without the ridiculous why for yes or in for no. So if that's your type of thing, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want those videos to appear in your notification feed, then ring the notification bell. That's what it's for. Well, we all knew what was coming. As the Lions had to move down from 85 to 80 men on the roster, they wind up putting Jamison Williams on the reserve non-football injury list so that means that Jamison Williams will miss at least the first four games of the season but he wasn't the only one put on the list the Lions made a bunch of injury related moves that cleared up some space and also are going to hold these men out for at least the first four games of the season let's take a look this information comes from Dave Briquette Along with moving Williams to the reserve NFI, they placed Romeo Aquara, Achilles, Josh Pascal, Hernia, and Jason Kabenda, ankle, on the reserve physically unable to perform list and released linebacker Sean Dion Hamilton. We are not surprised at this at all when it comes to Jamison Williams. I've been saying for the longest that we probably won't see him until at least the 23rd of October. That is after the Lions week six by week and as they go and play the Dallas Cowboys. According to how I understand this, not only can you not play until October 9th, you also cannot practice as well. So that means that the earliest these guys could come back would be the ninth. But will they be in football shape? Will they be able to jump right into a game? And for Jamison Williams in particular, I think Jamison Williams gets released from the list because after a little while longer, you have to put that person on permanent IR. I think Jamison Williams comes off the list after four weeks. Then he practices for another three, including the Lions bye week. Now, usually during the bye week, these guys are let go for a couple of days. They can go back home, visit some friends and family, and then it's a quick turnaround. They come back. And what I think is going to happen, Jamison Williams will come off the list. He will practice for the next three weeks, get in football shape, and then he can make his return for the Dallas Cowboy game. It's no surprise there. Jamison Williams is most likely going to miss more than a quarter of the season. He's going to miss a third of the season returning week seven. I think Josh Pascoe is the probably more surprising person to be put on this list. Jason Cabenda, I was wondering if the Lions were even going to carry a fullback, but apparently they like him so much that they're just going to move him. They moved him to a different list. Now, there is something that I found out today about Jamison Williams' injury that I did not know before. This comes from Dave Briquette in the Detroit Free Press. Williams underwent reconstructive surgery in January, a procedure that involved taking a piece of tissue from the patella tendon to build a new ACL and started running straight line sprints in the spring. We are now seven months removed from the injury. You might be asking, how do you count? I count one month from January. So February, March, April, May, June, July, August. That puts seven months since the surgery and since the injury. And he started running straight line sprints earlier this spring, probably within three, three to four months after the surgery. He still can't cut and do all that stuff. That stuff is very important. So they want to make sure that this guy is for the long term. So that means that it's good that our wide receiver room is so deep because we're talking about guys that we're going to wind up cutting that will probably be picked up by teams within 24 hours. So it's a good thing that we have so much depth. Now that's probably going to make room for a Tom Kennedy, a Trinity Benson, and whoever else is battling Quintez Cephas to make the team. Now as far as Josh Pascal is concerned, I really don't know how to feel about this because we took him in the second round and we could have taken – any other person, we could have taken linebackers, we could have taken safeties, but we took Josh Pascal instead, and now this guy is also going to be out for the next four weeks at least after the season starts. So that's the kind of one I don't know how, how I'm feeling about, but Jamison Williams, you already knew. We already knew this was coming, so no surprise there. How thin we are at cornerback, we were thin last year. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions wind up picking up a person or two after cuts next week when teams have to get down to 53 men. Now, I know we have Chase Lucas, and he's been stepping up. That's one position we can't have enough of, and I think that we might have to grab some people so that we're not in a similar position as we were last year because we don't know what's going on with Jerry Jacobs and when exactly he's going to be able to play. Here's what Dan Campbell had to say about the Jerry Jacobs situation. So much of it is when do you think some of these players will be ready? Week two? And if you put them on PUP, 
then you lose them for the first four weeks of the season, which that's okay. But yet if we think somebody will be ready to practice, for example, Jerry, let's say week one, but he won't be ready to play for a bit, two or three more weeks or something. You just, you want to get him practice time. He needs practice once everything's right. So we're kind of gauging that right now. Now, I want you to pick out something that he said about Jerry that I said about Jamison Williams early in the video. What did Dan Campbell say about putting them on pup and practice? He said, but if we think somebody will be ready for practice, for example, Jerry, let's say week one, he won't be ready to play for a bit, two or three more weeks or something. So bringing that back to Jamison Williams, he practices for two to three weeks. He could also come back for the home game against the Miami Dolphins. So either one works for me. I would love to see him play the Dallas Cowboys because we're going to need all the help we can get to play those guys. So but only if he's ready, of course. So while that's not the best news about these guys going on the list, at least that opens up a chance for maybe a Trinity Benson or a Tom Kennedy or even a Devin Funches, maybe a roster spot. For someone else but the cuts have to be made from 80 to 53 men in the next seven days and some of these guys will really be fighting during the preseason game spirit of detroit made a fantastic roster video that you guys should check out i will link that in the description and potentially have it as a card here in this video so let me know in the comments below what do you think about these moves being made for the detroit lions do you think now that that opens up a spot for trinity benson tom kennedy Devin Funches, somebody that might have not made the roster, but now will definitely be on with one of our wide receivers being out. My name is Derek. This is Detroit Lions Syndicate. Don't forget HBO Hard Knocks Episode 3 airs tonight. We got this one and two more to go after this. It wraps up the Tuesday heading into the regular season. So the sixth, I believe, is the last Hard Knocks episode. Still got your time to get HBO Max, either the $9.99 or the $14.99. Either one will work, and it airs simultaneously, so be sure to check that out. We are about 15 subscribers away from 4,800 subscribers. Well within reach to get to 5K by the start of the NFL season. So if this is not your first time here, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. That would be fantastic. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself. And as always, go Lions.